Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. Man, I threw out my back this weekend, excruciating pain and uh, not a whole lot of activity for me. So just coming back from a bit of a dreary weekend there for myself, but I uh, got news, good news on Bitcoin, uh, some, you know, pretty major news last week when we're talking about the narrative, right? The narrative has switched from Bitcoin, the ETF to altcoins are not securities. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, Dixie, gold, and uh, maybe some Ethereum. And what is likely to play out uh, this week based off of trend momentum and volatility. That's that's how we trade here. I want to touch on the crypto fear and greed index coming in at a neutral open interest. Uh, not helping me out here. <clears throat> open interest is taking a leg down uh, nine and a half billion right now. And uh, the funding rates, interesting. Um, let's see what we got here for funding rates and just went negative. So you're paying to go short right now uh, as we're testing alongside the bottom side of the range and I'm just gonna get rid of this get rid of that position um, so the last time we had a big negative day in funding rates was back here on July 6th and what do you think Bitcoin's price did on July 6th. I'm on it tested the bottom side of the range. Yeah, that's what we saw. July 6th, rates got negative, you're paying to go short, and then they throw it right back in their face. And I do suspect that that's probably what's going to happen here. However, if you were looking at this as a descending triangle, uh, we did currently just break it to the downside on a four hour time frame. Target would be 28,889 based off of that. Um, I don't think that's actually the case right now, unless we get some immediate follow through on the next, you know, four hour closure, you want to see candle body closure below there. What I think could be more likely to happen is we get one more wick down right below this area, grab all the, um, the soft losses and then throw it back up to the top side. Um, and then we still maintain the range. I mean, all this was a deviation above the top side of the range and then we aren't even quite deviating yet. So that's what you kind of want to see if you're bullish. We have one de deviation below this bottom side of the range, and then we get back in there and head back to the upside. So uh, specifically, that is what I'm looking for on Bitcoin. Want to follow up on the daily time frame as well. And volatility is increasing. Momentum is to the downside. So maybe we do get that test down again to the 28.8 or the green 55 uh, would be perfectly fine with me and usually yeah it does push through and then you got this last you know apparently yeah it's probably going to move rather swift um, and that's where you get those kind of capitulation wicks all the stops get taken out this inefficiency candle gets filled and very similarly xrp needs to do the same thing so overall I guess the question I'm going to get is, well, did the four hour range break? No, it is not breaking until we have a four hour candle body closure below in 29.883. That'd be good enough for me to the upside. Um, first warning side above <coughs> 30,300. And then, you know, back anywhere back above this high at 31.230. Then likely the volatility uh, on the daily time frame expands fully above 25%. Where are we at right now? We're at 15. So as expansion gets above 25%, then we're going to look at the direction of the momentum currently crossed down and we'll cross up today above 30,694. So that's a lot of work to do between now and the end of the day, three and a half hours. So um, pressure is on the downside right now until we can get back above 30,300 you know, uh, at a minimum on the four hour time frame. All right, that's it for Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at um, how the week, how the week close on Bitcoin as well. Kind of an indecision candle. We are still hanging out and uh, above this. And again, as long as we're holding the bottom side of the range, trading sideways, things are okay. Um, that is just my overall opinion. If we look at the chart naked here, 
I mean, he closed the weekly, uh, you know, below 29,430, and that's going to be bearish. Um, but you do have the silver cross present, uh, the higher highs and the higher lows present. So what's most likely to happen? Well, another higher high and then a higher low. And we see how this thing goes through the rest of the summer. Uh, we said, Dixie, we would check in on the dollar. This one did break to the downside, hitting the downside target. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if it was 100%. Let me put the drawn tools back off. Um, daily time frame. I need to clean this chart up here. Let's see. As we did break to the downside, if you were looking at this as a weekly descending triangle, important to note here, we're looking at the weekly, a very powerful time frame especially in US dollar terms. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, you can see this major trend line as long as we we're below there, hey, pressure to the downside and the measure move off of this descending triangle would have been something like this. Some measure from the 50% and these do have a 75% chance of breaking out to the downside, give or take a few percentage points. So. Where does this actually get us down to? A lot further than I suspected. 96.64, let's see where that lines up on the six month. For a big test down, that would be huge. I mean, that would be very bullish for risk assets. So point for the bulls there, we know when the dollar's going down, typically risk assets go up. So is the Fed gonna get the soft landing? Are we gonna get, you know, um, just a mild recession, if not anything? Who knows? Um, but after listening to Janet Yellen on the TV today, man, it's just more than more. The more you hear from them, the more you, you don't trust it. And uh, that's why I think Bitcoin provides an excellent opportunity uh, to diversify your savings and learning how to trade and kind of stack your Satoshis is probably one of the most valuable things you could learn uh, in this in this life because of the value of, you know, Bitcoin. But that being said, I know we didn't come for Bitcoin philosophy here. I'm gonna check in on a few more uh, that we've been going over the past few weeks. The, uh, the gold target is, you know, first target at the bottom box, 1988, second target, 2009. And as long as the dollar is bearish, it's bullish for gold. And you can see kind of a nice weekly trend line coming in here on this guy, Mr. Gold. Mr. G L D or yeah, this is the commodity actually. So as long as we are holding this region specifically, uh, yeah, this, the, you know, this last low on the weekly time, two day time frame, we're going to be bullish on gold for at least a tap up to the top side of the range and a world catastrophe to break it. Not celebrating that one, but, um, silver had a nice pop back to the, uh, ping pong in between the boxes. And that's what you'd like to see. And probably what's likely to happen, you're at the top side of the range. We come back down and test the mid range, I would say on silver before taking a leg higher. Ultimately, I do think this one gets back to the top side of the range, you know, um, you know, 27.90 and then 30 bucks at some point uh, over the next year, especially if we can hold this last low, keep the weekly uptrend in place. That'll look good for silver. Uh, I'm just going to do a little nosedive on Ave. Actually did hit our sell target at the green 55 perfectly and rejected. Um, that was Friday last week. And what am I seeing now? It looks like we are playing a little bit more. A little bit more of the downside here. And this is the daily time frame for Ave. You know, any kind of a closure below 69 bucks on the daily is going to look bad for... Uh, for the bulls at least and uh you know possibly getting a test all the way back down to this trend line but the first target is going to be the green 55. uh noting there is uh, going to be some drives of bearish divergence how many one two three is it yeah coming back from this high so um you can see a slew of lower highs all lower than this high right and you got 
from this high right here, you got one, two, three higher highs. So what is this hidden bearish divergence? Yes, we're looking at bearish divergence coming right from the critical zone. That's exactly what you want to see. And I'd expect to move based off of this, the green 55 for Mr. Ave. Yeah. Glad we took a look at this one today, guys. Um, and, you know, of course, invalidation, any kind of a four hour or daily back above 79.45 specifically, then I would say failure and no move. But as it is standing right now on the daily time frame, that bearish divergence coming from a high level. Uh, yeah, first target's gonna be this low, right? Uh, this low right here, if that breaks is the second target. Um, yeah, overall at a, uh, you know, 68.50, something like that would be uh, a nice kind of reset moment. You just don't wanna lose that target. If we lose that region on a closing basis, yeah, I'd, I'd expect to move all the way down to 60 bucks. Um, Ave has been an interesting one as of late. Let's check out AVAX, another one that potentially is preparing for liftoff. I don't think, uh, yeah, this is the area it's got a hold in my book is right here. This last prior wick kind of low, as long as we're above there, good. Below there, bad. Had a nice weekly close, kind of a, you know, bullish engulfing candle another drive of hidden bullish divergence. And you can see this one get a shot back up to 20 bucks pretty easy um, as you're gonna have one, you know, coming back from this low, one, two, three, call it four, no, three drives, gets you a shot to the green 55. And yeah, that would be my base case target over the next few weeks, as long as we don't take out the prior low at uh, 1135. So not, not a bad, set up for Mr. AVAX and especially will do well. I think if Bitcoin picks itself up and does not break the range that we're in right now. And I said gold, silver, Ethereum, and that's it. And I'm calling it a day, guys, my back. I'm literally been dying here with this. I pulled a muscle in my back and uh, yeah, it's never happened to me before. So let's just check out uh, Ethereum, clean up the chart a little bit on the weekly. And what do I see? The first thing I see present is the silver cross, the 21 uh, above the green 55. That is a bullish indicator right there. And um, pretty easy way to, you know, manage risk below the prior wick. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just talking about what I look at for my trade setups. Um, but in general, you can see the last time we got a silver cross on Ethereum for the weekly time frame was back over here. Blindly buying the cross uh, led to a mega melt up rally from 240 all the way up to 4,000. So um, definitely like to see Ethereum back above 2100. Give us a shot on the weekly for uh, some of the deeper targets. The next target from there is gonna be pretty easy to catch here. And that'd be my base case for Ethereum 24, 460. We're right in line with these uh, prior lows. So remember support becomes resistance, right? It was support here, flip to resistance. And now I do expect probably that being a major area of resistance. But if Ethereum can get back above there, I think it's gonna rip uh, pretty quick. Coin stock, oh yeah. One piece of news from Binance, they just integrated the Lightning Network, so uh, cryptocurrency exchange Binance has completed the integration of the Bitcoin Lightning Network on its platform for BTC withdrawals and deposits. And uh, it says when users now choose to withdraw or deposit Bitcoin, they will now be able to select Lightning as an option, other options, BNB Smart Chain, BNB Beacon Chain, BTC Segwit and ERC20 token. So. They did give their coins a few shells there uh, in the announcement. That's fine. Uh, but it seems like, uh, you know, progress in the right direction. Crypto bubbles on the day today, uh, pretty much a mixed bag. Gala leading the pack up 7.4%. Uh, That's in the top 200 coins. Let's check out the top. Silo uh, and Sushi are winning on the day here. <laughs> Good old Luna's up too. 
All right. I think that's wrapping it up for today, guys. I'll be back uh, with some more TA this week. Uh, again, something to keep an eye on here. The economic uh, data coming out tomorrow. Retail sales, kind of a non-significant in my book. And then building permits. And then it'll be Wednesday, jobless claims and existing home sales. That's probably the bigger day this week for... Uh, and then you got S&P global manufacturing PMI at the end of the week. So we'll see how some of the data comes out. If it continues to be favorable, you know, um, dovish type stuff, then I would expect, you know, resolution of the range to the upside. If we get some real bearish economic data, which, you know, I, I can't think of it, but that, they, that that's what a black swan is, um, could send it down to the bottom side of the range and create probably one of the better buying opportunities of the year. Um, ahead of the Bitcoin halving cycle, what I'm talking about. Specifically, as soon as we broke out of this, you know, this falling channel, I said, hey, look, where's the most likely place that price retraces to after a nice inefficiency candle? Well, that's 618. So I'm just gonna put this right here. That is from the high to low, absolute uh, low to high on a bearish retracement, the 618, yep, coming in right there. So you technically wanna see those bounces pick up anywhere in that zone and then we are going to stay bullish um below that box um we'll we'll go over that when it happens that being said guys i hope you have a blessed and highly favored day i will be back with you tomorrow take care and see you soon